What can you tell us about Greg Newsom? I know pre-draft you talked about him. So then the the Browns, you know, they were able to sit at twenty six and get get their guy. Um, did we get the kind of get? Did we get a guy who's going to bolster this defense into the top five, top ten, like what people are thinking? Well, as the Browns were preparing for the NFL draft, um, the two most glaring needs to fill with the defense were defensive back and defensive end. Defensive back meaning safety and also cornerback with the emphasis on cornerback. And when the pick came around, they took Newsom, who was rated as the third highest cornerback. He looks like a good starter and one of the better corners in this draft class. I think he's got everything that a modern NFL defense would look for in a starting corner. He's got great length and quickness. He's got solid size, excellent speed, and he's got the versatility to play in any coverage scheme called. Newsom runs a 4.3940. I mean, the dude can just outright fly. He has the ability to deny receptions, and he can defend passes at the catch point. Uh, another aspect of him is his recovery abilities are excellent with that top end speed. I remember watching uh, Deion Sanders back in the day, and he would bait quarterbacks by hanging off as much as five yards because he had that great top end recovery speed, and he did a lot of picks. Newsom has the same thing. Last season, he uh, Newsom was uh, named first team All Big Ten, plus named All American, and he was part of two squads that played for the Big Ten championship. Uh, I think the entire pre-draft process, he was projected to go uh, somewhere in the first round in the twenties. Y'all remember me coming on your show and giving you his name for round one? Absolutely. We oh did. yeah, yeah. We kind of gave you well, some pushback on it too, a little bit. So you were very, very on point with that. Yeah, well, I'm a, I'm officially right once a month. <laughs> <laughs> so that was it for the month of April. I mean, that's a big uh, right. That's good. Uh, yeah. What do you have to say? You know, I guess some of the talk about him was that other than the Ohio State game, he didn't face a lot of top tier um, wide receiver talent. Is that something you're nervous about with the Browns, or do you think his skill set transitions still? Uh, against that top tier talent? Well, I think Newsom's a really good football player. He's a film junkie and he comes well prepared for his opponent. Uh, he has played in press man, um, off man, zone coverages, and he shows comfort and upside in each coverage scheme. I think he's above average, but not great with run defense. Um, pro, but in all, all fairness, quarterbacks refuse to throw towards him. Get this, according, according to Pro Football Focus, Newsom allowed just one touchdown in 471 coverage snaps. Is that good? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> do you know which game that was? I'm just curious. I, I do not. Okay. But now, now all of us can go out in the parking lot and throw the football, and every single one of us would have at least touchdowns scored on us. <laughs> And that's just one day. <laughs> yeah. I think you're overestimating my ability to run. <laughs> I, got you. I don't think so. <laughs> now, now Newsom does have two areas that are a concern. His lack of turnovers stick out and injury history. Yeah, he the injury three, history is something we wanted to definitely dive into with you. He played three seasons with 18 starts and had zero force fumbles one recovered fumble, zero sacks, zero pick sixes, and only one interception. That, as far as a turnover ratio, that sticks out pretty well. Um, now, the injuries. He was never hurt in high school. At Northwestern, he missed eight games in 2018 with an ankle injury three in 2019, and then another three last year, including the Big Ten Championship, he had a hamstring issue. Um, through his three seasons at Northwestern, he missed nine games. And, um, and But the good news is that none of these were injuries involving the back, neck, or knee areas. 
I think what is difficult to digest is that the Browns already have major concerns with Greedy Williams missing 20 games so far in two seasons. And then you think about it, Denzel Ward missed 11 games in three seasons. Do you all agree? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's why, I mean, I don't know if you watched our reactions live whenever the pick was made, but we weren't jumping out of our seats in joy. And I think that had a bit to do with it was that injury history of knowing we've already got issues with that, you know, injury issues in the in the cornerback room. And I mean, we're, I mean, yeah, we're adding a great player, but we're also adding more injury concern, you know? Yeah, your reaction act was deflated. Yeah. <laughs> We were also super tired, too, at that point in the show. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I saw a lot of empty beer glasses, too. Yeah. <laughs> no. no, I had did not drink at all that entire night. <laughs> That's a lie. I, I actually did a lot. Okay. Um, okay, maybe I was looking at my desk. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think Newsom pushes gre- uh, healthy Greedy out and he takes that starting spot away from Greedy? Well, I think basically right now I see this as Newsom and Greedy Williams fighting for the right cornerback slot. Now, Greedy's got NFL experience, which means he has seen and done things that Newsom is not. I think if Newsom can remain healthy, which he currently is, he'll surely help this Brown secretary with either being a, a potential starting position or giving him some quality depth. I think when Newsom's on the field, he plays like he his goal is to not let the receiver he's covering catch a ball all game. Well, that's a good goal to have yeah. for a cornerback. I was going to say I was going to address some of those, you know, the lack of uh, turnovers he's forced and stuff like that. Does the fact that people didn't throw his way play into that at all? Um, it's you know, it's it's hard to intercept the ball or force fumbles if nobody throws in your direction ever. Yeah, and that's exactly true. And 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 after a while, he's he's batting down balls, or he's got tight coverage, and he's really good in man. Quarterbacks and defensive coordinators just uh, eliminated him, and they just didn't throw his way. Now he'd always take the best receiver, but if your second best receiver is having a great game, I can remember one time with the San Francisco Forty ers they the other team's defensive scheme was to take out Jerry Rice. Well, in the meantime, Terrell Owens had a career game on like 184 yards and three touchdowns. So, but if Newsom can do that, and Denzel Ward is a, a similar player, then we've got two great cover guys that don't need help with double coverage and may not even need the safety to come around and help. You know, with with the receivers that we have in our division, kind of just looking at the AFC North specifically, I mean, with Pittsburgh, I know Ben is kind of on his way out and the arm isn't what it used to be, but I mean, they've still got, you know, Claypool and Deontay Johnson and uh, Juju, and they've got um, Washington still there. They just drafted that Friar move. Friar move at the tight end. They've got Eric Ebron still. I mean, they've got guys who can catch the ball. And then, you know, in Cincinnati, we know what weapons they have. And, you know, Jamar Chase, the new guy, they've got T Higgins, Tyler Boyd couple of their tight ends. I mean, they're not like fantastic, but they're also no slouches. They've got backs out of the backfield that can sense. catch. Yep. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, Baltimore, you know, we rag on Lamar Jackson all the time because he sucks at throwing, but, <laughs> you know, they added some good wide receiver depth in this yeah. in this draft class. And I, I mean, we, we also thought that Josh Allen wasn't that great of a passer for a couple of years. And, and look what he turned into over the course of one offseason where he got a lot of good work. And all of a sudden he was, you know, this stud. So, yep. I don't know. I just wonder... It, do you feel like Newsom's skill set right out the gate, day one, can match up with the receiver specifically in our division? Well, if, uh, very few positions in the first round are not expected to start. Maybe offensive line, um, maybe linebacker, but everything else, if you're taken in the first round, you're you're drafted to come in and play. You're drafted to come in and play Year one, day one, game one. That's what they draft you for. That's their need area. So you've got all of training camp and all the OTAs and all the off season to get ready. But come game one, you're expected to be on the field and be in a starting position. Now, like I said, he'll have to fight it out with Greedy Williams. And the hope is, is that Grant Delpit and Greedy Williams 
will be the players that they were drafted for, both of them taken in the second round. And if we, if they're healthy and if they're the type of players they were in college and can adapt to the NFL level, you're talking about the defensive backfield might be one of the best in the NFL this year. 